Well, it all started back in 1969 in my father's living room, actually. My father was very capable of pulling people together. Uh, I can remember him inviting several guys from the food industry. Alan Bildner was there and Joe Aslino was there. They came for a common purpose. The food industry at the time was under siege. We had no representation at all in Trenton and they saw the need, so they came together and they started the Food Council. There were different organizations that were having their views represented to the legislature and we need to go in and advocate for the issues that affect our industry. And I believe the original founding fathers thought hey, you know, we need to stand up and protect our industry because the political world is intruding on our respective businesses. What great insights they had 50 years ago to put this together with those kinds of big thoughts. I've been lucky enough to work with people of vision, with people of determination, people who can collectively come together and be the voice of the industry. And we've become a brand today. And I think it's because of the fabric of our members who come together under the banner of the Food Council. They understand the importance of a healthy supermarket industry. The mission is always changing, depending upon the circumstances. Government has the best intentions, but very often they're misguided and they need the vision of the Food Council. Probably one of the biggest things that the Food Council accomplished was the defeat of the bottle bill and the establishment of the Clean Communities Program. It's a perfect example of how we were able to meet in the middle and come up with a program that benefited the customer in a much more positive way. If it was one voice against Trenton, it would not be very easy. But to have this multiplication of many voices is indispensable. At the end, the cause is always greater than a person. We made some great decisions in the past, and it was based on the greater good of the food industry. It was always about doing the right thing. Harkening back, I remember Jay Edelman, our first president. What a great guy he was. He had a big personality, many accomplishments, and he really formed the foundation for the success of the Food Council. Barbara McConnell, she was charming, she was smart, she was insightful. And she had over a hundred legislative and regulatory victories after 10 successful years. Jim Morford, more of an intellect, but a fine gentleman. Jim was so well respected with his lobbying skills in Trenton. He is a Trenton icon. Rick Wright was here for a very short period of time, but Rick can be credited with New Jersey being the 50th state to change to a dry tear regulation. And of course, Linda Doherty, who's our president, she's very insightful, had a regulatory background, and now she's been able to have the legislative part of her, and she's been very successful. Linda's been a rock. Her and her team do a great job. She's really the person that brings it home for us and we can't thank her enough. We really appreciate it. I have served at the Food Council under nine different chairs. We have a very strong executive committee and I have seen those members come together, whether it's in trade relations, our loss prevention, food safety, our Food Council Committee for Good Government, and I've taken a piece of their leadership and I've brought it into the Food Council to strengthen our association and to strengthen who we are. I am always amazed by the support of the members. If you're in the food industry, this is the group that you want to be part of. As a young person in the food industry, it helped me to move outside of the four walls of our own organization. And it really blended the best of both worlds for what I have a passion for, business and politics. So it was a great fit for someone like me. I volunteer to be on this food council because I am dedicated to making this state the best place for businesses to do what they need to do to provide consumers with what they're looking for. And we have such a dedicated membership that understands their customers and we've been very, very successful making a difference in this arena. We have some successful programs that the members have benefited from including our energy aggregation program, at our food handlers training program, our leadership development program, as well as our scholarship development program. When you look at some of the profound issues that we've worked on here, one I recall is the gift card litigation. And we were so committed to protecting the consumer that we decided to file a lawsuit. And on that day I had gotten the news that we had won at the U.S. Supreme Court it was the same day that Superstorm Sandy hit New Jersey. We had significant issues. We had a lot of major power outages throughout the state. 
Some lasted for well over two weeks. The food industry became the center focal point of every community, and we were here to help everyone. Finally, after we started to see that the industry could recover from Superstorm Sandy, did I then let the members know that one of the most significant lawsuits that we ever faced, we were victorious. Each year, we have grown the Food Council. And right now, we're an industry that's being disrupted. It's almost like a chess game. You have to anticipate what's coming before you, and that becomes the success of our association. As Richard Saker now steps down as chair of the Food Council, as his dad was our first chair 50 years ago, is just a legacy, but also the future of the association. I'm excited for a new leadership team that will be taking over in 2020. We're going through an evolution. Our customer is changing. They have different demands. They have different ways of thinking. We need to embrace that change, and we need to bring them into our fold. Consumers are much more involved and aware of what's happening with their food, what's happening in the communities, what's happening with the water, waste removal, plastic bags, cardboard, the list goes on and on. And so it is absolutely, absolutely a critical time in the history of this organization. We're not the same association we were 50 years ago. We've tackled the issues, anticipated the problems, looked at the challenges head on, and it's helped us create that roadmap for success. And I think our founders would look at us today and say, job well done.